Good morning, friend. We are getting ready to start a bunch of our summer crops today. I got my second to last seed haul and I've been waiting for it to come in the mail in order to start some of these crops. So today is the day. Now this is some compost I've already sterilized, but it's dried out a bit and I need to rehydrate it so we can make more soil blocks today. Plus, I know that I'll need more soil. So I've got my big pot of basically boiling water and we're going to mix this boiling water into our soil. And I may have put a little too much in there. The idea of using basically boiling water in my soil is to kill off any bugs or larva that could be living in it. I'm gonna mix this up. It actually feels pretty good. So I need this to cool off a little bit before we can actually turn this into soil blocks. I'm gonna put the lid on this because we'll use this later today. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. First, I wanna show you what has germinated. We have a ton of green going on in the grow room already. So we have started only one vegetable so far this year and I see germination on it. We have celery, celeriac. They're still just starting to sprout up. Our snapdragons have started and a ton of our eucalyptus is starting to pop up. As soon as I started seeing germination, I popped off the plastic. Now look at this, these are all of our pansies in this row and then petunias, tons of germination on this. I got two more varieties of petunias in the mail today, so I'm gonna put them in here. We have a few stray seeds, I think, that got in those soil blocks, but I'm gonna put some petunias in there. Over here, this is all snapdragons, and we have so much germination on these guys. You can see there's a little bit of algae, and I need the soil now to start drying out before I water it. That's why I took the plastic off. More snapdragons, great germination, and a ton of our onions have started to germinate. To see that germination is pretty exciting to see any green in here. Last year I tried growing petunias and I had zero <laughs> germinate. To see so many germinate over there is pretty exciting. I've got some more petunia seeds in here we're gonna start today. So this is from Botanical Interest and my this is my second from last seeds coming in the mail. My final seeds coming in the mail are from Florette and those are just flower seeds. But here I have some different vegetables to supplement what I already have. The first we have sugar daddy sugar snap peas. So I purchased Oregon snow peas from Johnny Seeds and I wanted to get just some sugar snap peas. These are the plump type sugar snap peas versus the Oregon peas are thin and skinny. So these are gonna have the sweet little pea pods inside them. Jade green beans, which are my favorite green bean, and I needed some more seed. And I think I'm just gonna lay these out and show you. A lot of these we're gonna start today, and then quite a few of them we're not. We're going to direct sow a little bit later in the year. A lot of the peppers that I'm gonna grow this year came in this order, and that's why I needed to wait to start my peppers until these seeds showed up. For my sugar snap peas and my jade green beans, I did get the bigger packs because I wanted more seed than just what would come in a small pack. And then what we're gonna be growing, but not quite planting yet, arugula. I've never grown this before, but I've fallen in love with it. So we're gonna attempt to grow that this coming spring. Milkweed, now these seeds are what I am the most excited about in this haul. And these are sweet peas. I ordered four varieties of these and I'm gonna have these growing on trellises all throughout the garden. These are not a pea that you eat. Sugar snap peas are edible peas. Sweet peas are actually toxic, but they create a beautiful flower. So you don't wanna eat these. You grow these for the beautiful flower and the aroma. I have never seen a sweet pea in real life. I've only ever seen it on video. And I'm excited because I've just heard incredible things about the aroma and the beauty they bring into a garden. And the cool thing about these seeds is I'm gonna be direct sowing these into the ground so I don't have to start them inside, which is gonna make life a little bit easier when it comes to growing these flowers. So I went with varieties 
that have a beautiful color, plus that have a beautiful aroma. And these grow up to, this one's eight feet tall, this one's six feet tall, six feet tall. And this is a perennial, which I didn't even know that sweet peas came in perennial varieties. So I have to figure out where I'm gonna put them, but the rest of these are just annuals. And I'm excited for the hummingbirds and the butterflies and all of the fun creatures to be invited or be beckoned into the garden because of these seeds or flowers, I should say. The flowers are what are gonna draw them into the garden. I also grabbed some more nasturtium seeds. These are one of my favorite flowers to grow as well. They're very easy to grow, and I love the black velvet variety. Now, this is lupine, and I had this at my last house as a landscape flap flower, and it was a perennial, and this one says annual. I thought I was buying the perennial one, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this, Cosmos, one of my new favorite flowers. I only grew white ones last year, and so I'm excited to have some color in the garden with Cosmos. Dill, and then two pumpkins just for fun because they're some of my favorite things to grow. We've got a cantaloupe and a yellow watermelon. I grew a yellow watermelon last year, and it was one of my family's favorite things, so I thought I would try that. A whole bunch of peppers. These are what I was waiting to come into the mail so that we could start our peppers today. So we're gonna start a lot of these today. The petunias, I got two more varieties of petunias and I'm gonna start all of these today. There's 25 seeds in this one, 10 seeds in this one. This one is absolutely beautiful. The purple and white variegation on this. I'm excited to see how this goes. Shallots and leeks, when I opened this for the first time, I forgot that I had ordered leeks, I'm not leeks, yeah, leeks and shallots. When I was at the grocery store the other day, I was like, oh man, I kind of wish I had ordered some shallot seeds because I love them and I've never grown them. And it looks like I, I got them. I ordered this like a month ago, but they got lost in the mail of, with all the ice that we had. So I'm really excited to see those in the mail. Some cauliflower, I, I probably, I didn't realize that I had already ordered this from another company. So I have plenty of cauliflower seeds. Romanesco, I'm excited to try this. I've never attempted to grow it. Stevia, eggplant, I've never even eaten eggplant before, so I'm gonna to attempt to grow it and see if we like it. I'm just gonna grow like one or two plants. And then Sweet William is another flower I've never grown before, and we're gonna start this today. And I should see when to start indoors, eight to 10 weeks before your last frost, which is currently right now. I'm just gonna put all these seeds right back into the box they came in, and I'll organize them into my seed containers a little bit later today. I wanna get going on starting planting actual things into soil blocks because that will feel good to get something checked off the list. So I'm just gonna put away the things that I'm not starting. When do I start stevia? We're gonna start stevia today. So these are going up here. Maybe not. <laughs> So for sure I'm starting all of these today, plus I have some seeds that I pulled earlier and I'm gonna be starting some of these as well. Here's a bunch more pepper seeds. I need to finalize all the peppers that I'm gonna be growing. I definitely don't think I need to grow this many varieties plus all the varieties I have out here. I need to rein it in just a little bit. So I'm just gonna stick some peppers here so that I can decide all the ones I wanna grow. But now that I'm looking at it, I wanna grow all of them. I'm the most excited about the Anaheims. I've never grown Anaheims before. And if I am thinking correctly, I believe Anaheim peppers are the peppers that come in the little jars that you get at the store when a recipe calls for diced chilies. I'm pretty sure they're Anaheims. So I've never grown them before and I would love to be able to jar up some of my own Anaheim peppers because we love those in white chicken chili and enchiladas and all those good things. So I'm just gonna set these here and let's go make some soil blocks. Now I'm gonna be making larger soil blocks for my peppers. I'm not gonna be starting them in my little itty bitty soil blocks. So I'm gonna grab some trays and then I think for my broccoli and Romanesco and cabbage, I think I'm actually gonna start some of those in my cells. I'm not gonna use soil blocks for those. I'm not gonna start a zillion of those. I'll grab some of these so we can fill these up. I don't think this year I'm gonna grow any 
broccoli because I've just had such poor luck growing broccoli. So if I want broccoli, I'll just get that at the grocery store. I think what I'm gonna do first because this is gonna be really easy and it's not gonna take much brain power, is I'm gonna go ahead and plant my, uh-oh, these soil blocks are on the loose. Petunias, because I know I'm gonna plant those and I know I'm gonna plant the whole packet out. So I'm gonna grab this tray that has a blank spot and we're gonna put our petunias right here. So here is where I have some empty soil blocks and over here I planted two varieties of petunias that I got from Territorial Seeds. I will put a picture of what they look like right here. The first one is this Easy Wave Velour Berry, and that's these back here. There weren't very many seeds that came in each one of these packets, so that's this one. And then this is Shockwave Purple Tie-Dye, and that's these right here. And we actually got pretty good germination because there was only about 10 seeds in each one of these seed packets. Oh my goodness. Shockwave purple tie-dye, shockwave purple tie-dye. <laughs> One of my friends on Instagram sent me a link to the shockwave purple to territorial seeds, and I saw them and I just instantly purchased them, not realizing that I had already ordered them from Botanical Interest. And that just shows that I really like them. And I'm totally okay that I have more of them because there was only 10 seeds or so from territorial seeds and it says that in this there's only 10 seeds as well so that's going to give me a total of 20-ish plants if they germinate and these seeds are super teeny tiny the cool thing about the seeds that I got from territorial seeds is that they were pelleted so that just means they put a little bit of a clay coating around the outside which makes it a lot easier to sew. Oh, these are pelleted as well. So that's awesome. That's gonna make this a lot easier. So that's not the color I want. Just need a little bit of water here. I have one pelleted seed on my toothpick and I'm gonna put that right in the middle. Pelleted seeds make it really easy to see if you've actually planted a seed in your soil block. So some of them got a little crushed, so I'm not sure if there's a seed in this last little bit of dust here. So I'm just gonna kind of pick all of that up and put that right here. I don't know if that will actually have a seed in it. And then I'm going to move all of these soil blocks next to each other because I know that these are all the same variety. There we go. So I'm just gonna put a little arrow. We have shockwave. Purple. I just cleaned out my bowl. Now I'm going to plant the Garden Party Blend. This is more of a traditional petunia that you see when you go to your garden centers. And there's 25 seeds in here, so I'm just gonna plant this whole section back here with these petunia seeds. And these are pelleted as well, so that's gonna make it a lot easier. Try to get every single seed out of here. So now you can see the little seeds there because they have the clay coating 
And what I'm gonna do is just take water in a spray bottle and gently spray until I see that that coating dissolves. I can actually see the clay coating dissolving. I'm trying to keep that seed in the middle of the soil block. Petunias need like to germinate, so you've got to get that clay coating off of them. And I'm not gonna put any soil or anything on the top of them. I found that when I sprayed these with my hose, these tiny seeds like the snapdragons, they kind of got washed around. And so some of my <laughs> plants are actually growing on the sides of the soil block. I'll show you in just a second. So using a little spray bottle, I think is the way to go. Get them kind of secured in place in the middle of the soil block. And then I can use my hose to water them. I need to fill more water in this. There we go. Okay, that is perfect. I don't see any more clay. I'm gonna take a piece of plastic wrap that I already used. I'm just gonna use this again as my humidity dome. I need to write on here that this back half is my party mix, garden party mix. And these are going right back under the light because they need light to germinate. So now we've officially planted out all the petunias that I'm gonna be starting from seed this year. I can see that the sun is shining, so I'm gonna take some of my seed starting things and we're gonna head outside and try to enjoy being outside. It might be a little chilly, I might have to grab a jacket. I'm looking for my pen. And we're gonna go make some soil blocks, which means I need to get a soil blocker. Seeds, pen, markers, my soil and trays. And we're gonna take this party outside. Oh my goodness, it feels fantastic out here. So the first thing I think that I'm gonna start, because these are gonna be really easy, are my leeks and my shallots. And I'm gonna do this the same way I did my onions. King Richard is the variety of leek I purchased. And I've grown those in the past and had really good luck with them. So if you missed how I did the onions, I'm gonna grow them in four inch pots. I think these are actually five inch pots. I think for each variety, I'll need two pots. I'm not gonna fill them all the way to the top. say how many seeds are in here it just says the weight so I think two hopefully should be enough just when I kind of feel the bottom of it yeah, maybe we'll need to do a few more I want about 20 ish seeds per pot so I'm gonna do four which means I need to write two more of these. That was very easy, very little decision making. We're just gonna cover this with some soil. I'm gonna go grab two more pots and we'll get our shallots planted. This only has 250 grams of seed. This had 750, so I might only need two pots for this. Oh yeah, there's not very many of these in here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, shallots are now planted. I now have all of my onions and leeks and everything planted for the year, which is pretty exciting. I'm just gonna set this, maybe I'll bring this inside. 
And now what I'm gonna go ahead and start working on is making a bunch of soil blocks for peppers. That's the next big project we are going to do. And I'm gonna use my larger soil blocker for this because this small soil blocker I used originally for my itty bitty teeny tiny flowers. And I know that peppers just start out bigger than petunias and snapdragons and those types of things. So I'm already, pro I am going to have to transplant these into a four inch pot, something like this. So instead of having to transplant it from the really small soil blocker to then this size soil block and then to this, we're just gonna go directly to this size soil blocker just because I think that is what is going to be the easiest. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my larger trays for these. I'm gonna use these for when I use my small soil blocker and these have big ridges in the bottom, which is good for watering, but not good for using with those tiny little soil blocks because the ridges, you can't press down really well. And to make these larger soil blocks, which I need to add the little nubbins in there, I'll just grab my other one. You can see it's got these little buttons in here and that's gonna make a spot for me to put my seed in. To make the soil block though, it's the same way to make the larger ones as it is to make the little ones. This might be a little bit on the moist side, this soil, but it will work. I'm gonna push it in there. I'm gonna take it over to my tray and push down a little bit pull up and release. And we've got beautiful soil blocks. So I'm gonna make a ton of these, a few trays worth. I'm gonna start all my peppers in soil blocks this year. So I've just, whoopsie, the soil is a little bit on the moist side, but that's okay. So I'm gonna push down. So I'm pushing on this, but I'm not lifting up because I just wanna compact that block and then I'm gonna lift up and release, and we got a beautiful soil block. So I can already tell I'm gonna need another bag of soil here. So I'm gonna go grab that and get that steeping in some of that hot, hot water. So I'm just gonna start with a bag of my compost. Now I've got my basically still extremely hot water. Start with that. Oh yeah, that's very hot still. I put too much water in this, so way too much water. So I'm gonna put a half a bag of compost in here. The name of the game is probably start with a little less water than you think and then add more. Maybe I'll start with a third of a bag. When you squeeze, your soil, you don't want a bunch of water dripping out of it. You want it kind of like a Play-Doh consistency. You want it to hold its shape, but not drip a bunch of water. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit here steep and cool down because it's very hot. While this is steeping and cooling off, what I need to do is go back in the seed room and try to figure out what seeds I am gonna be starting because my collection of peppers is way too vast and I'm not gonna be starting all of the varieties of peppers I have. I've had mixed success with these different varieties. That's why I chose a few new ones this year, just to see if I can have better luck. So let me just go through here and figure out what ones, I know there's ones that I purchased this year that I'm absolutely gonna start. I'm starting these for sure, cause these were recommended by Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead and I've never had good luck growing bell peppers before. 
I've never grown banana peppers and I just got these and I wanna grow these. The Anaheims, I definitely want to grow. And so I just need to go through here and figure out all the varieties I'm gonna be growing this year. Some of these peppers are the same type, like jalapenos I've grown with mixed success. So this year I purchased a different jalapeno variety and we're gonna see if I have better luck with that one. And I know I wanna grow those, 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 those. I'm having a very hard time narrowing it down. I wanna grow all of them. Okay, I think I've narrowed it down to still a lot of peppers. I love peppers and I love hot peppers and I love hot sauce. And some of these I'm growing because I've had good luck with them in the past. And so just to guarantee that I get somewhat of a harvest, I'm gonna grow some of these. We'll go over all the ones I'm gonna start. But then some of them are new that I wanna grow because I would like to get them. There is one that I don't think I'm gonna grow this year and that's a Tabasco. I've tried growing Tabasco for the last four years and I've had zero success. So that took some time for me to do that. So now I'm gonna go make a bunch more soil blocks and I'm gonna go ahead and just get these watered in here and get these covered. Having the water in this room has been the biggest game changer already this year. I have turned the heat mat off because I didn't have anything on the heat mat, but I will be using the heat mat today and I'll need to turn that back on. I have a collection of the plastic wrap that I had already used. And I'll just reuse this multiple, multiple, multiple times throughout the growing season. I am keeping track of everything that I am starting. And so I'm just gonna put here February 22nd, cause that's what the date is. I'm gonna put my shallots and leeks. And I'm gonna say that I did start some petunias today and I'm also going to continue today as I go mark down what I started, how many I started, so that for next year I have a good record of what I started and I can know I started way too many of X, Y, or Z or not enough of X, Y, or Z and whether I started them too late in the season or too early in the season, meaning if I started them too early, then I had to keep them indoors too long. They got big and they're hard to manage if you start things indoors too early and started them too late is, oh, I could have had a larger pepper plant when it was time to go out into the garden. So things like that. So I'm keeping track of everything. I've never done anything like this before and I'm really thinking that this is gonna be super beneficial for going into next year's garden season. <laughs> so I'm thinking about next year's garden season as I start this year's garden season. So because I have so much soil in here now, I can just push it up against the side as opposed to pushing it on the bottom to continue to make my blocks. Earlier I said that I thought I was gonna start some seeds in my six cell trays, but I end up starting all my seeds on this day using soil blocks. I think there's pros and cons to all different seed starting methods. And I had time on this day to make soil blocks. And so I decided to go ahead and just go ahead and make a ton of soil blocks. But you will see throughout the growing season that I will be starting seeds in the cells and in soil blocks. I'm gonna use just a bunch of different methods of seed starting this year, and it really just depends a lot on how much time I have when I'm starting the seeds. If I have more time, I will use soil blocks. If I have less time, then I will use the cells because they're just easier and faster to fill. But there's definitely pros and cons to all different seed starting methods and honestly just finding what works best for you is the best. So I'm just gonna keep making soil blocks today and then we're gonna start putting seeds in them. I have three trays done and I grabbed my seeds of peppers and I'm just gonna start laying these out. This is kind of how I figure out how many trays I need to start is I just start kind of laying my seed packs out. I can get two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 28, 30, 32, 36 plants in each one of these trays. 
And so I'm just gonna start laying my seed packs out and trying to plan out how many plants I think I want. And then I will have to figure out if I need to make more trays. I definitely think I need to make at least one more tray for the pepper plants. Some of the really, really hot pepper varieties, I do not plan to start a bunch of them. Probably around four plants is more than enough. This is not a scientific method how I do this. This is just me kind of getting into the garden. That's why I want to track how many of each variety of plant I start this year so that next year I can know, wow, I did not plant enough sweet peppers or I had way too many hot peppers. So far, I've never grown too many hot peppers, but it definitely could be a thing because I'm going to be trying to grow a lot more. I've actually had better luck growing hot peppers than sweet peppers. And this sun and the smell of the soil, it does wonders for mental health. One of the main reasons why I love gardening is it gets me outside, it gets me in the sunshine, gets me vitamin D, smelling the earth and hearing the birds chirp, seeing the blue sky, it's fantastic. I just did the math and one of these trays will fill one of my raised beds if I plant them three deep and what did I say? I think I said 12 wide. So I don't think, you know, I don't think I'm going to make another tray just for peppers. So I think I need to condense how many I'm gonna grow. After much contemplation, I think I finally figured out all the things we're gonna sow and how many of each one. So let's go inside and start sowing some seeds. Every year, I feel like a brand new gardener. And I think that's why I want to keep such good records this year is so going into next year, I feel, I'll feel more confident and I won't have to do as much kind of guessing with how many things I should start. Last year, we were building the garden at this time and so, I didn't really have the bandwidth or brain capacity to track everything and make a bunch of big decisions for the garden and all those types of things. And so now that the garden is built, my goal is to become more intentional and figure out like how many I need each year or be better about that so that I don't take as much brain power when it comes to starting seeds. This garden situation is so completely different than my first garden because we didn't have very much sun and even though I only have four more beds here than I did at my previous garden, all the beds are functional and growable because they all have good access to sun. My last garden, it actually probably was about the same because I did have some in-ground beds that I grew in, so I probably had the same amount of technical like growing space, but half of it was covered in shade, and so it wasn't very abundant because it was covered in shade. So what I've kind of done here is just laid out my seeds and I understand how I'm supposed to sow these. So let me bring you in and show you what I'm doing here. This first tray is going to be sweet peppers. So we're gonna do our Anaheims and I did read the back of this and this does say that these are great for stuffing, canning and using fresh. So these are what I'm going to attempt to make homemade chilies with or freeze them. So maybe I'll char them, skin them, chop them up and I could freeze them as well instead of canning them. I'm not exactly sure, but I've never grown Anaheims before. So I'm gonna grow four rows worth of Anaheims and then I'm gonna grow five rows worth of the monster yellow because I want sweet peppers for, you know, fajitas and things like that. I'm gonna do two rows of this type of pepper. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It says that this is a sweet pepper, really good on the grill, really good in salads, just an overall really sweet pepper. Ancho or poblano, I'm gonna do two rows of that. So each row has four, so it's gonna be hopefully eight plants. I'm gonna do two rows of the banana peppers. And then these are kind of fun new things to me. This is a sweet 
pepper. Now, originally this is a hot pepper, but they have this variety, which is sweet. I'm gonna do one row of this, this is new to me, one row of shishito peppers, two plants each of the long purple eggplant and the black beauty eggplant. So we're gonna just do the long purple and the black beauty. So not much, because I don't know if I like eggplant or not. Then we're gonna do one row. These are gonna be all the hot peppers. So I'm gonna make hot sauce with most of these. So this is a sweet, but very, very hot pepper. I've never grown it. I just thought it looked delicious. It kind of looks like my sugar rush peach pepper, which is technically a hot pepper, but it's pretty sweet. So we're gonna do one row of this, one row of this. This pepper, I heard that the Holler Homestead really likes. This is a hot pepper, it's purple. It actually changes colors. So it starts out as orange and then goes brown and then red and then, or maybe it starts out as purple. I don't see purple on here. It says that it goes from orange to brown to deep red. So at some point it's purple. And I, it's kind of like the Chinese five color pepper, which I'm not gonna grow this year. I'm gonna grow this one instead. I've had such good luck growing sugar rush peach peppers. I got these as a gift two years ago, I think, and I've had great success. So I'm gonna grow these. I'm gonna grow some of these really hot peppers to make hot sauce, habaneros. And these are all, I'm just gonna grow one row. So four plants worth. I'm gonna grow two rows of serranos and two rows of these jalapenos. And then I've got some bachelor buttons, sweet William that I'm going to sew in these mini soil blocks that I went ahead and made up. And then over here, this is my cold weather veggie crops. So I'm gonna do two rows of the Romanesco. I've never tried growing this before. It's supposed to, I've eaten it and it's delicious. It's kind of a mix between a broccoli and a cauliflower. And then I've got this hybrid white cauliflower. This is like a floretting cauliflower, kind of like broccoli raw, but it's cauliflower. So I'm excited to try that. I'm gonna do two rows of cauliflower, two rows of cabbage. I was getting a little overwhelmed when I was sitting here trying to make all these decisions, but because this is why, <laughs> just so you can understand how my brain was working. This is my time frame to start peppers. So if I get in the garden and I start planting peppers, I really don't have time to start any more peppers inside because I'm starting these eight to 10 weeks before my last frost date. And I kind of miss my window. So if I don't have enough, then I would need to be running to the nursery, which I don't think I'm probably going to do. If I don't have enough, I'll just make note and then next year I'll start more. So I was kind of feeling the pressure of, oh my goodness, I should just start crazy amounts, which I already think that this is probably more than I need. So whatever I don't end up using, I will go ahead and just gift to loved ones. So pepper seeds are a lot bigger and you know there is only 30 seeds in here. So I probably am gonna end up planting, I said I was gonna do four rows. I don't know if I need my toothpick for this. Usually I just pick it up, but I don't know, maybe my toothpick method will work. No, it doesn't work. So I'm just gonna put one pepper seed in each one of these holes. Maybe I should do two. I always go back and forth if I should sow two seeds per hole or one. I'm just putting one to two seeds per hole. I couldn't make up my mind, so if I put two seeds in the hole, then I'm happy with that. If I only put one, I'm happy with that too. And now the next most important thing that I'm gonna do is mark what they are. I like to take some of the stickiness off by just kind of sticking it onto something. This is just some white duct tape. And let's see. If I like both these varieties, I have enough to plant next year. I'm gonna put a little tail here so I can pull this off when I need to. Oh, we still have to cover these. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is just go through and start seeding all of these and writing what they are. I should probably just move these out of my way. I'm sitting on this chair backwards and that's very, very uncomfortable. Let's turn that around. Oops.
I typically have pretty good germination rates when it comes to peppers. And one reason why I couldn't decide if I should plant one or two is I absolutely hate killing off a seedling if to germinate. And that's what the experts say to do. They say plant two, hopefully two will come up and then go ahead and cut the, the one that's not as strong looking and just kind of call that plant. Ugh, I hate doing that. And so that's why I was going back and forth if I should plant two seeds or one seed. It feels wasteful to me, but it's not wasteful if you have poor germination and then you wait you know, a week or two for the seeds to germinate and then you realize you planted, you know, eight soil blocks worth with one seed and only one or two sprouted because you had poor germination and then you need to go back later and start those and then you've lost you know a week or two or whatever it might be um i don't think there's a right answer when it comes to that it's just whatever you know your personal preference is if you have less like heat mat space then maybe planting two is better so that's why i just kind of met in the middle and i did some with two some with one and i've had a bunch of them at this point already germinate and what i'm going to end up doing is i'm just going to let the two i think grow and then in the ones that did have two germinate and then i will separate them when i up pot them so that i get more pepper plants but maybe I will call them. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to just wait and see what I end up doing. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just getting them all planted. I'm marking down what they are. So far, I've kept really good records on what I have started and how many I have started. I can already tell you that that has been a very nice thing because even when I've just been out in the grow room, because that's what I like to do in the mornings is get my coffee and go out there and just stare at my little seedlings and see what's changed and what hasn't changed, is that I have been able to kind of look at my record of what I've already started and it feels very, very good. It will be way less brain power next year. What I didn't show was probably two hours worth of just thinking and trying to figure out exactly how many I should start of each one. It was just a lot of me staring at my seed packets, staring at my soil blocks, doing the math on how many plants I can fit in each one of my raised beds. And I don't want to have to spend that time every single year in my garden trying to do the mental math of that. I just know that next year I have it written down that I started 20 Anaheim peppers and I will know that after harvest and preservation that, wow, that was not enough, or, oh my goodness, I should have planted 25 or whatever it might be. I know that it'll just be a lot more straightforward going into the growing season next year. And, you know, every year there's different things that I learn and I incorporate into my growing season. We can't all do all the things right when it, you know, we're learning something new. And when I was starting to you know, start seeds and I had no clue what I was doing. I just didn't have it in me to also like keep track of those numbers and things like that because it's just not my personality. And now that seed starting is not as overwhelming and I kind of got a good idea on what that entails, then I have the mental capacity to then also now keep record of it not just in visual form, but also in a written journal form and that is very encouraging for me for going into 2025's garden. The last thing to be planted is the sweet William or Delphinia. And I got these two mini soil blocks planted and then bachelor buttons in these two. This is a mix that has two different blues, a purple and some pinks. And I do need to cover these with soil. I have yet to have to cover these mini soil blocks with soil because the last time I used them, the seeds needed light to germinate, so I didn't cover them. So I think what I'm gonna do is take this dry soil that's really kind of powdery. I don't know if this is what I should be doing, but this is what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna gently cover them I did kind of push the seeds into the soil block just a little bit. It's where I'm not an expert at soil blocking. I'm gonna kind of pick up some of the excess here. Now this tray has a ton of soil blocks. It has two, four, six, eight 
foil blocks that don't have anything on it yet. And that's because I am going to be sewing some of the goodies that are still in the refrigerator stratifying some of my flowers. So I will fill those with seeds in probably about two weeks. I might have to remake the soil blocks, I don't know. I don't know how well in advance you can make the soil blocks. So now over here, I've got my cauliflower. I'm just taking a little bit of soil and kind of just putting a little bit over the top of these, making sure there's no big pieces of wood or anything covering the hole. These are the peppers. These have all been seeded now. I don't need to put a ton of water on the top just to basically get that top soil wet. Right, now we need to cover these and I've got my plastic wrap down here and then I also need to plug in my heat mats because I had turned those off because there was nothing on them so no need to run them if I don't have anything on them Put this one down here. I did not label those so I need to label the bachelor buttons and the sweet William Thankfully, I only have two things on that tray, so it's gonna be easy to remember which is which. This tray right here is the cauliflower and Romanesco. This does not need to go on the heat mat, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the top shelf here. I need to bring in the rest of my shelves this doesn't need light to germinate and I'm just gonna put it up there for now. Once I pull in some other shelves, I can get them on here without the lights turned on, but these all have the lights on. I'm gonna do the same with the Sweet William and the Bachelor buttons. And then probably later today, where's my tape? I will grab another tray just so that they're not up there because as soon as they germinate, I need to get them under lights and I don't want, if I forget them up there and they sprout, that wouldn't be good. They need to go under lights as soon as they sprout. So this is Sweet William and Bachelor Buttons. And today is the 22nd. Some things prefer to grow in cooler temperatures. This room is a cooler temperature. I needed this soil about 75, 80 degrees for my peppers to sprout or germinate. They can germinate at room temperature, it just takes a really long time. And so that's why you use the heat mat because it helps stimulate germination. So that's why I have them on here, same with the onions. And we're just gonna let these sit here until they germinate. And once they germinate, I will get them under grow lights. That can go up there. What I'm gonna do now is kind of boring is I'm just gonna count up all that I started and I'm gonna go ahead and write them down so that I have that in my record. And that is starting all the sweet and hot peppers for this garden. So that was super fun. I need to clean up. I am going live. I hope you joined me when I was live. If you didn't, I can put the video here. You can go hang out with me live. We're gonna be talking seeds, seed starting, and all this fun stuff that I'm really excited about. I haven't been live with you all in a long time, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you for being here. This is just the start. We have all of our tomatoes to start, a bunch of flowers to still start yet, and it's gonna be a great year. So thank you for being here, thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.